this show is brought to you by Doc Sports Services. And today on Listen In with KNN, it's being brought to you guys live. That's right, myself, Kelsey Nicole Nelson, alongside my one and only co host, Ray Jones. We're coming to you live. Ray, how are you? I'm excited. It's our first live show. First live uh, show. So just ready to get this energy up. Yeah. Have some good content and just hopefully a, get a lot of people tuned in, excited to listen to us today. I am very excited. First time live in 2018. Yeah, definitely, and definitely. I mean, it means we're starting off 2019 in the right spot. So, I mean, for everyone listening, this is going to be a very special edition of Listening with KNN on Fox Sports Radio 96.9 FM and 1340 AM because we'll be recapping the 2018 year in sports. I can't believe it's over. But with that, it means it's time to sit back, relax, and get ready to listen in and follow along as always with the conversation on social media using hashtag Listen In with KNN. You ready to get into it, Ray? I definitely am. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. So we're going to kick off with the NBA and one of our favorites. And we have to talk about it because everyone's talking about Sports Illustrated naming their person of the year for 2018, the Golden State Warriors, of course, because what can they do wrong? What can they not do right? So tell me, when you first heard this news, were you surprised at all? I was a little surprised, you know, just because it says person of the year, they gave it to the entire team. So does that include the ball boys, the towel <laughs> girls, like managers, everybody, like so <laughs> yeah. the whole squad get it? I don't know, it's just, it's cool to see the whole organization get recognized. So yeah. um, I thought that was a big deal. Um, but for them to get person of the year, I, I don't know. There's a couple of people I would have thought may have been in that conversation. You know, Mayweather, like who? Mayweather, of course. Yes, of course. He's yeah. always doing big things in his sport. Um, so just it, it was a, it was a, it was it was a little not surprising, but yeah, I expect a little bit more competition in it, right? But it's cool. I, I think it just sees that Sports Illustrated is really seeing what we all see of the Golden State Warriors, that they're just dominant in everything, right? This super team thing has catched on, and Sports Illustrated said, hey, you know what? The Warriors deserve it because they're making it work. We all ask, could they make it work with the addition of Kevin Durant, right? Could they still be a super team? They're still doing it, right? Now, they're not, I don't think, the same as they've been in the past, but I think every time we have the finals conversation now, we have to put the Golden State Warriors in it because that's how dominant they've been, and I think they deserve it. I mean, not just on the sports field, but what they've done with declining to go to the White House, um, after the championship, I think they've just continued to kind of set the bar, right? And they're people that we constantly look at. Um, and even now with the KD and um, <laughs> that's what I was going go to go to the KD and the, the that's beef that's ask. going on in the locker room um, and Draymond Green. I mean, what do you think about that? I was going to go to you. All like right. you said, they, they're making it work. So how much longer do you think they continue yeah. to make it work? Because obviously Draymond, you know, he's a little upset with KD right now for different reasons. Uh, KD has his lingering right um, free agency coming up. Yeah. So. Kind of see, uh, is the team in flux? Uh, what's going to happen? Are there going to be some changes yeah. this summer? As you can see from previous seasons, every year their bench gets a little weaker and weaker because yep. they have to pay you know, the big stars to, right. get, to keep them on the team. Right. So now KD, was he, is he going to require more money? Um, and if so, who are they going to lose off their bench? Um, right. And then a couple injuries to Draymond early. Yep. Dr uh, Steph had a couple injuries early on. He's coming back full flesh. So it's a lot of things up in turmoil, a lot of changes. Then once they uh, get Boogie back here in, what, uh, maybe February, March yeah. time frame, how are they going to incorporate him right. into the offense? Is he going to uh, chime in defensively? Is he going to be ready physically? Right. Mentally, um, he's down in the D League now getting ready. But it's going to be a lot of things change, a lot of moving parts coming this season. So it's interesting to see if they're going to be yeah. able to continue this. And you talked about continuing it. So everyone's talking about Andre Godala, right? We have to think about this. He's owed $17.2 million next season. That's a lot of that's a lot of zeros in that mm -hmm. figure, right? And he's that's the most out of any of their non-All-Stars, right, on the roster of the season. I don't know if they can keep him because I think you already probably have to look at letting him go at least, right, to try to keep – and that's what it's hard to think, right? It's hard know, to think man. about, Trey's right? A, Trey's a glue guy. I love Andre J. Right. Iguodala. Um, back when it, it's Philadelphia 76ers days, I always thought he was a great player. Right. Uh, maybe not a number one option, but yeah. a great glue guy. He does everything well. He contributes to the team. He's a great leader on the floor defensively and offensively. He likes to set people up. Right. Um, so I think them losing him, if they were potentially to lose him in the offseason, that would be a, definitely a big blow It'd to It would be a team. huge loss. I don't think yeah. people value him enough on that team. But think about it. They're trying to keep KD. Mm -hmm. And also we're forgetting the, uh, the other member of the Splash Brothers, Clay Thompson. All right? They also got to keep him on. So I think you have to look at those three and see who is really valuable. They're hopefully keeping this championship spree alive. And that's that's a hard decision. I don't know if you can really pinpoint uh, which one of those you'd want to let go. So let me ask you, if, if you were in that position and you had those three, oh, let's man. say, who would be your person that you would let go that's a hard one I know who I would let go I'll be honest with you I think as much as I love Kevin Durant with the oh, Golden State you Warriors stole, you stole it as much me. as I love KD with the Golden State Warriors I think you can let him go right I they're agree. winning championships before him guess I what agree. 
they can win after him. And I'll say that on the show. And I think KD, for the superstar that he is, I think it's time for him now to go to a team where he can own that team and really spread his wings and fly. I mean, yes, we see he can play with superstars, but we see he hasn't been able to get to championship experience when he's only been with really one other superstar. Mm -hmm. And we know that happened in OKC. Um, DC fans, I know they would love to get him back here. All this that's going not on in chance. Washington, though, he's not coming here. Nobody not wants to come to Washington. Uh, but I think I would – I hate to say it, but I think KD would, would be on my block. I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I was going to say KD as well. Okay. Um, I feel as though if you do let KD leave, this allows you to bring in another player, maybe not of his caliber, but someone else to fill in that void. Because right. you got to think, Steph, uh, Steph's stats have dropped, of course, since Clay uh, – since Katie's joined the team, yep. Clay's uh, stats have dropped. Of course, I think they can make up for those points that Katie provides without within the players that they already have. But then bring in another additional piece, maybe two pieces with yep. the money that they allotted for KD, and potentially make their team stronger and deeper as a roster, a full roster. Did the Nick Young move at all surprise you? I was surprised to see Nick Young. Yeah. Um, I wanted him to come back to Golden State. Honestly, mm -hmm. I thought he was an intricate piece on their bench. He just provided that little spark for whenever you know Clay needed a rest or yep. Steph needed a rest. Just that energy off the bench. I, I really thought they were going to bring him back, which is, is you know that's unfortunate. They can't bring right. everyone back, but that's like I'm saying. They let KD leave. They can bring in maybe three or four pieces right. of the Nick, Calib Nick, Nick Young caliber and potentially fill out their roster yeah. and then have that depth, that depth, that strength to finish out through the playoffs. You know, Iguodala right. and Sean Livingston don't get much playing time during the season. Right. They're kind of trying to, you know, rest them off for the playoffs. Right. But now you don't necessarily have to do that. If you bring in a couple more pieces, you can kind of, like, spread the wealth a little bit right. and get some more continuity yeah. and chemistry early on in the season. And I think it's only going to be exciting, right? And only time will tell because we keep forgetting. You talked about it earlier, but Boogie Cousins is yeah, coming back. That's, that's what's piece. so scary about this team in the West. So I think they're when they when Boogie comes back, I think they'll really see uh, who they want to bring into the following season. Because we see the Lakers are getting stronger, and we're going to talk about them less. The, the West just continues yeah, to get definitely. strong. Let's go to the Lakers. I'm excited to talk Lakers. So we have Lonzo Ball and LeBron James almost looking like best friends the other night, right? Because uh, the triple doubles just continue to sprinkle, and it just seems like both of them are finding. I'm just the Lakers seem like they're finding their way, yeah, right? The Los Angeles Lakers team seems like – I'm not going to say they're the Lakers of the past just yet, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to give them that credit. But I think they're looking like the Lakers team that we expected when LeBron first made that jump, saying he was going to be a Los Angeles Laker. What about you? I think, obviously, it was going to be some type of time. It was going to take some time for the team to come together. They're yeah. all pretty young. Uh, for them to gel, I think they're actually gelling a lot faster than I thought they would. Mm -hmm. I had them as a playoff team, but I expected it to be, you know, maybe – January, a little late Christmas time that yeah. they would start gelling. They seem to have gelled a little earlier than expected, yeah. which which speaks greatly to the, the process they'll have through the rest of the season. I think Tyson Chandler was a huge piece to bring in. Um, he was able to provide some leadership, some mentorship to the young guys. He was able to just bring a winning a winning mentality and a do-it-right mentality to that yeah. team, something that LeBron can lean on as a, right. another veteran in the league. Um, I thought a huge piece that would have been for them to bring in would have been Ariza. I think Ariza would have oh, took them yeah. to that next level. Um, it's unfortunate they weren't able to get him. Yep. But I think they can probably, you know, work their way around the season and yep. maybe pull in another veteran piece to bring to that roster. But I thought Magic Johnson was a genius by bringing in oh, yeah. Rondo and yep. LeBron. Yes. For specifically yep. for Zoe. Right, because he's a young player, right? I think he's a little bit of them two combined. Mm -hmm. um, just because of his length defensively, right. Right. I think he can be better. I yeah. think Rondo will bring that out of him. Yes. He'll bring that tenacity out of him. Rondo yep. will push him. And then LeBron, just his skill level and the right. type of uh, – he can learn a lot from LeBron. Of course. I feel like this this is going to make Lonzo go to that next uh, echelon of players. Yeah. It's going to make him better and potentially an all-star maybe next Ooh. year. Not this year, maybe too yeah. early. Uh, but next year, I definitely think he'll be yeah. an all-star. Yeah, I think you're t sounding like LeVar Ball over there. Lonzo as an all-star, right? I, definitely, I like Zoe. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to see Zoe do well. Um, and I think bringing in those two parts, those two pieces, made his, is going to help his development tremendously. It'll be huge, and I think Lonzo, we've been tough on him, right? And it doesn't matter how you feel about LeVar Ball, but I think Lonzo came into the league, and we were expecting big things of him, mm -hmm. right? But I think now he's finally getting into that role, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, he's an NBA basketball player that knows what he's doing on the court. Mm -hmm. I trust the ball in his hands. That's the Lonzo Ball I'm looking at right now, and I think last night just solidified Lonzo's role with that okay. Los Angeles Lakers team, and I think all, him and LeBron are just going to keep growing. I mean, they're already setting records. Poor Washington has to play them tonight. With all that's going on, I'm like, Wizards fans, D.C., I just, I feel bad. Lakers got it going on right now. Washington is in this huge turmoil. You talked about Ariza. I am happy what he'll add to Washington. But I'm like you. He would have been great on there. Because Trevor Ariza, I don't care what anybody says, he is a baller, right? Okay. You put the ball in his hands, I'm trusting that shot to go in. Um, and I think that's what he would do. But the Los Angeles Lakers fans, I think you guys gained a good one in LeBron. Don't be too tough on him. And I think only time will tell. Right now, the Lakers are in fourth in the West. Just think about that. Fourth in the West, this young team that LeBron's on. And who, 
we're still early in the season, right? I mean, a lot of stuff can change. 18 and 11, and I think, honestly, they're going to be 19 after the Washington Wizards win tonight. I know it's hard to say as a D.C. person, but um, the Los Angeles Lakers are looking pretty good. They found their mojo. 14 wins in their last 19 games, people. 14 wins in their last 19 games. And, of course, LeBron James is – I mean, anytime you have James around, I think winning, a winning culture can be established, and I think that's what's happening right now in Los Angeles. LeBron's going to LeBron, so you got to just be able Brown to ride Brown. that train with him. <laughs> and they're riding it with him. All right, staying on basketball. This one hurts me, Ryan. I'm not going to lie to you because this man is from the DMV area, Markel Fultz. All right, so everyone listening, maybe you guys can help us figure out too. But, of course, we're all talking about how he went from the number one pick, right, in the NBA draft to now we're trying to figure out what's happening with his shoulder and his shot. And will he be that same player that he was in Washington um, in college? Okay, so it's been almost a month, right, that he hasn't played for the Sixers organization. And to his to – his, point he's recovering from something called thoracic outlet syndrome all right if you're like me and you don't know what that is google it that's why google's our friend look it up it's actually something that he was diagnosed with people i'm not making this up so that being said ray markel Fultz. we know he can ball he's had a couple bright spots this season um but a lot of people are talking about his first trainer messed up his shot even more and then we've seen some of those free throws and we're like what in the world is going on and people are like how can you forget how to shoot a basketball right like I mean, it's not all time. Is something he's going through? It's it's something with his shoulder, but it's just he's not the same, mm-hmm. right? And I, we know he can be a great player. What do you think is going to happen with him? We've heard the Sixers have gotten some low ball offers if a trade were possibly to happen or something like that. But I'm not even worried about that. I'm worried about his future in the NBA because I don't think he's just a fluke number one draft pick. I think something's really up there and something's wrong, but I think we're still not getting to the source of what's wrong with young Markel Fultz. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I want to see him do well, and I'm glad they finally yeah. found, I guess, a diagnosis for yes. what's causing these issues. makes you feel a little bit better, I um, think. Because now you see, okay, it's actually a nerve issue, and mm-hmm. those take a little bit of time to repair. Right. Uh, they kept guessing around. They kept getting it wrong. Yep. Um, and it, you can see it was starting to affect him mentally. He was losing a lot of confidence. Um, so hopefully now that he has this actually figured out a little bit, um, he can work through his rehab, go through whatever psychology, um, if, if necessary, um, just to get him back to feeling like himself and being himself. Right. Um, it was definitely... I definitely don't believe that the Sixers should trade him because at this point his value is relatively low. Mm-hmm. They won't get equal value right. you back to get what him, you want, yeah. And it may come back to backfire mm-hmm. if they do move him for a smaller piece. So why not just let him rest? You don't necessarily need him right now. Right. Let him build his confidence back up, get him back where he needs to be, maybe even send him down to the G League temporarily. Mm. Maybe yeah. a short little stand in the G League will get his confidence back up. He put yeah. up 50 on a couple of guys. He might fill himself a little bit. <laughs> yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? Go down to the G League, something. get some work. He's still going to have good competition in the G League, but he's able to just get his confidence and score, get some good passes off, get his shot feeling right, yeah. Come bring him back in slowly into the lineup, and then have him ready by the playoff time. Because moving him right now is not the smartest thing, in my opinion, because like you're not going to get equal value for him. Right. And he's definitely going to be a star one day. It's just this little short moment in his career that he needs to get past. Once right. he gets past this, I think he'll be great. My problem more so with this Mark- Markel Fultz situation is that the Sixers organization doesn't seem to know what's going on, right? So Candace Buckner, who covers the Washington Wizards here mm-hmm. and writes for the Washington Post, she had a story out about how that many in the Sixers organization didn't even know he would miss time for a shoulder to see shoulder specialists, right? Mm-hmm. You know something's wrong with his shoulder. We talked about its nerve damage. How in the world does this organization not know what's going on? I think that's the bigger problem. And then there's so many things going on with his family and that there was a camera placed in his house mm-hmm. to see what's going on. I think we really somehow have to find out the root of the problem. I think right now we're nipping at the buds of it, but we're not getting to the root of it. Mm -hmm. He's a great player. He's still very talented. I have not given up hope on Mark Helfoltz by any chance or any means. But I think like you, I think he needs time to develop, get his confidence back up. But I still think we have to figure out, because I've never seen this. Most people have never seen this. It's going to be a great 30 for 30 sometime in the future. <laughs> we have to really figure out what's wrong with the shoulder. I know about nerve damage. I've had it in my leg before. It's not. It's something that I can come back from, right? And I just think somehow, some way, Markel Fultz is going through something that none of us seem to know. Not even his family seem to know, right? And I think... And when you play in the NBA, right, you have so many people on you, especially on social media, and I hope he's probably staying off of social media because there's a lot of mean things about him on there. But I think everything's starting to get to his head, and you talked about it. He's playing with a great 76ers team, right, a young team that's very talented. So there's a lot of pressure on him, especially when you're in that number one pick. So I think time will tell. But I do like that move of moving him down to the G League. I would not be mad at that. And I think the Sixers have nothing to lose in that point because, like you said, no, a trade is, is nothing right now. No way near they're going to get what they want uh, for him. And I think they just need time to develop him. So. Definitely, definitely. Time will tell. All right, let's switch plates to the NFL. It is Sunday after all, Mm -hmm. so we have to talk some football. And we cannot talk NFL without starting with Colin Kaepernick. So there's so many pieces to this. He continues to be at the top of the conversation, especially with this Washington team here. Some people are saying, hey, you're on your fourth uh, quarterback, Washington. Colin Kaepernick was available. But let's talk about it. He has a collusion case that's going on. And 
I mean, it's supposed to, the process is supposed to go through early 2019, right? So we're not going to get anywhere anytime soon. But, right, there are a lot of bad quarterbacks mm-hmm. in the NFL that we saw through this 2018 season, Nathan Agreed. Peterman being one of them. Oh, my gosh. Oh, don't go him up to Peterman. Oh, I'm Peterman. sorry. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. I can't believe he did that to my eyes for a couple weeks. But, anyways, that being said, I mean, Colin Kaepernick, where do you see 2019 going? Since in 2018, we know he's just – he was constantly in the conversation, right? But it just still seems that no team is ready to add that Colin Kaepernick saga, right, mm-hmm. to, to their team. So, I mean – Will he suit up? We don't know in 2019, but in 2018, we still have not seen him play, and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Uh, so what are you thinking about all the things with Colin Kaepernick this year? Um, I really think the Red, uh, the Washington team, they, the Redskins, they missed it by not trying to at least bring him in. Uh, they have Josh Jackson right now. Right. Similar play set, uh, skill set, excuse me, similar yeah. skill set. Of course, Colin Kaepernick is better. Um, yeah. Josh Jackson's been in the league, I think, maybe – 12 different teams now. So he's been around. And it so, was a while it, before he and, last threw a touchdown, right? And this is his right? first okay. start in, I think it was like That's seven crazy. years or something like that. Yeah. So this was the great opportunity to just bring in Colin just to see what he had and see what he can do. Right. Um, not necessarily have him start, but just see what he can contribute and bring to the team. I thought this was a great opportunity. He missed out on that. Um, as far as any other team in the league, like I said previously, the best opportunity may be for him to go to the Carolina Panthers and play mm. Cam Newton's backup. Ooh, right. Don't get me excited. Well, I'm just, just thinking about it. Just because you got to understand <laughs> – yeah. The, the Panthers organization was understanding enough to allow Eric Reed to come to their organization. Right. He still does his protest. Hasn't really caused many ripples. Um, yeah. There's, you know, some fans may have had some kickback to it. Yeah. But overall, it hasn't been a huge headline story. Yeah. Um, granted, he wasn't Colin Kaepernick, but right. he still is protesting and he's still getting his point across. Right. Then on top of that, Colin Kaepernick and Cam Newton are kind of s- similar in skill set. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's mobile. They're he has running a strong styles, yeah. arm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that would be something in case, you know, Cam has an injury. Un- God, Lord forbid he does have an injury. Right. But just as his backup, right. he can fill that void. It won't be much of a changeover. Yeah. You'll have someone already in your system yeah. ready to just jump right in and take yeah. over. And that's such a good point. And I only bring that up to say because the Ravens are going through that right now, right, with mm-hmm. the Lamar Jackson, Joe Flacco turnover situation. You have Joe Flacco, who is a thrower, right? You know Joe mm-hmm. has an arm. So as a defense, you're preparing for that. That long deep ball where now Lamar Jackson the Ravens are running over 60% of the time yeah, right yeah. so that was a big turnover and now you have your Ravens wide receivers you have Crabtree you have Brown like hold up now like we like Lamar Jackson but guess what the Ravens are doing more running plays because it's more of his style where you're right with Cam and Colin Kaepernick at least it's more similar right mm-hmm. so it would make more sense and that turnover wouldn't be as dramatic as we're seeing right now in Baltimore right where you have two very different styles of quarterback because exactly. when Joe would run I'm telling you everybody in Baltimore would be very excited because you never call him mobile Joe you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you just if he ran you just you cross your fingers please don't get hurt and hopefully he made it right but now I think we're seeing that and I think there has been a term where we are looking at more mobile quarterbacks we have mm-hmm. like Sean Watson and people like that but Sean Watson of course also has an arm um but I like that but I think I really I honestly don't think we're going to see Colin Kaepernick play in the NFL again we didn't see it this season I don't think we're gonna see it next season I think it's unfortunate um because I think as you said I think he can still play Eric Reed vouches for him he posts his workout videos on social media so it's not something we can't see but interestingly enough the NFL always makes the point of the bottom line I do think Colin Kaepernick would bring fans in those seats even if he People hate him, you want to see him fail, right? And people that support him want to see him win, right? Okay. So at the end of the day, I think he also will bring fans in the stadium. So I don't think that point can be made that he's going to hurt your fan base or your ticket sales because I think it goes both ways. Controversy wins usually most of the time, right? And so I think they can't make that point. And I think you do have to at least give him a chance as a backup. I'm not saying sorry, but at least as a backup, he could be in the NFL right now because there are not mm-hmm. enough good backup quarterbacks. And with that being said, there's also, I think this may this this upcoming offseason may be his one his last opportunity. There's not that many quality, I say quality, but great um, free agent quarterbacks on the market right, right. now. There's going to be a lot of teams looking for quarterbacks. Right. Even the draft isn't that stacked with a lot of great quarterbacks. Good like point. this previous draft we had, there was probably at least six, maybe yeah. seven quality, strong quality right. future starter quarterbacks. Right. This next draft may not be that many, maybe two to three potentially. Right. Um, so this will be his opportunity to hop on a team. You know, Jacksonville's going to be looking for a quarterback. Yep. The Giants potentially could be looking for a new quarterback, even yep. though Eli has play, played great as of late, but they may be looking for someone as his predecessor. Right. Um, or his successor, excuse me. Yeah. Um, so there's different opportunities that he may, and then even even with the Redskins. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Alex Smith just got out of the hospital. Just got back. He had yeah. an infection. He may not ever play again. And honestly, I wouldn't um, blame him for that because that I mean that was a crazy, that was a crazy situation, injury, yeah. right? I was at that game, and as soon as he, I said, mm. "Oh, that's that, he's not coming back." You can see his Joe foot Theismann resemble. Oh my yeah, gosh, was, I just it was bad. And you're right, Washington. Let's be honest, Washington needs a quarterback. This yeah. fan base in DC will not let them live until they get a quality quarterback. If Alex Smith does not come back, I don't think they're just going to put the hole in Colt McCoy's hand and say, "You know what." 
not hey now. Like, Josh Jackson you know? isn't going to be the long term answer. No, Sanchez so. isn't the long term oh. answer. We no, already no, no, know no, Colt no. McCoy isn't the long term answer. So what's going to happen with Washington? That's such a good point. Colin Kaepernick may. I mean, granted, he may not be the long term answer either. Right. However, this fan base would gravitate towards him. Yeah. Um, just being in this area, this region, I yeah. think they would gravitate to Ka- Kaepernick, and yeah. then he could p- potentially perform well. Hey. Um, he has some weapons. He has a decent running game. Yep. This is a good opportunity for him to maybe step in and just increase his value. Yeah. And then maybe help keep the Redskins afloat for a little while. Yeah. Hey, something. We need anything in D.C. right now. <laughs> it's tough times with basketball and football. Thank gosh the Caps uh, got us the championship this past season. Well, staying with the NFL, we have to talk Baker Mayfield. Everyone's talking about Baker Mayfield. Of course, he was the first overall pick in the NFL draft, just 23 years old. And people are coming off the big one they had, 17-16, at Bronco Stadium at Mile High. Right? Did you catch that game at all? Yeah, I did. I like that game. Brown's nice. first win since 1990. Ray, I wasn't born yet. Like, that's crazy to think about. That's funny. You made me feel old. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to make you feel old. But, I mean, that's just crazy to think about. I mean, in Baker now, people are actually – so Von Miller actually said that Baker Mayfield is an elite quarterback in the making. Let me say that. An elite quarterback in the making. He had to add the end. So we just in said an making. elite, Ray. We would start getting yeah, yeah. crazy tweets at us, and people <laughs> might send death threats or anything. I don't even know. Uh, but Baker Mayfield, I do like him. I think, of course, he's breathed life into this Cleveland Browns team that for a long time now has needed this life and air. Now, when you say Cleveland Browns, it's not just a guaranteed win, right? It used to be you saw the Browns on your schedule. You might not even go to that game. Mm-hmm. You pretty much marked it as a W, right? But now that Baker's there, it's new and it's fun and he's exciting. And I think he's giving this Browns offense new life. And, of course, the defense, when your offense is doing well, you want to perform, right? So they can continue um, to do well. And I think he has good arm strength. It's, it's growing. Um, and I think, obviously, he's mobile. Um, and right now, the Browns, I mean, four of the last five games, six, seven, and one. Look at that. And their playoff hopes they are alive. mathematically are still alive. So <laughs> Cleveland, oh, my gosh. I can't believe we might even say that. But so something's happening in Cleveland, right? We thought when LeBron left, everything was going to be sad and the saga was. <laughs> oh, it's still sad. Some, it's still sad. <laughs> it's still I'm sorry, sad. Cleveland. <laughs> Something might happen in the future where we actually get really excited about going to Cleveland. But that being said, I mean, Baker Mayfield, are you a, were you a believer after this 2018 season of what we've seen so far? Okay, so what I want to say is I have a bone to pick with pa- Baker Mayfield okay. simply because he doesn't get the ball to Landry enough, and I feel like he's going to cost me my fantasy football <laughs> league. So right okay. now I'm not really you're feeling not, Baker Mayfield because I have Landry in two leagues, and he only has like three catches, and it's really bothering me right now. So I just need. I think he needs to get the ball to his star more because yeah. Landry is obviously a star wide receiver. He's a big play wide receiver. Get him the ball more. But overall, I think Baker Mayfield is playing great. Um, he makes a couple of. He has a really strong arm, so I think his footwork may need to improve a little bit just so he can plant his foot because he he overthrows a lot of passes. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's but that's something light. I think that we can get they can get through that. They can fix that. That's something light. But he makes great decisions for the most part. Doesn't really turn the ball over too much. Um, he's still a rookie quarterback, so you're going to expect some type of turmoil, some type of um, bumps and bruises. But overall, I think he's done well. You kind of like think if you think about it, they had Tyrod Taylor. You kind of forgot Tyrod was even on the team once. Isn't Baker that crazy started. to think about? And Tyrod wasn't playing poorly; he was yeah. playing well. Yeah. He just happened to get injured, and right. they never looked back. Right. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see that hey, he's playing that great that you forget all about Tyrod Taylor. It's unfortunate for Tyrod because I was a fan of Tyrod's, but Baker's been doing his thing, and he, they've been winning. Um, and it's, it's interesting to think about the fact that they fired Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley, and they've won, what, three or four games now since their departure? Isn't that crazy to think they about? They hadn't won that many games in the last three years. So who was the problem? Was it Hugh Jackson? And that's what people are saying now. Like, They're like, Baker's been rolling since uh, Hugh that, went that's bye-bye. Unfortunate. So it's crazy to think about. And as he said, sometimes it just takes that, like, Tyrod was the man, and the next thing you know, we see Baker, and hey, uh, who Tyrod who? Yeah. <laughs> like, And that's what it's come down to. And I know I bring this up a lot of the times, but I said the same thing. That's how Joe Flacco's career started after Troy Smith got the tonsillitis, right? And then Joe had to call, be called up to start, and then Troy, Troy who? <laughs> I mean, now it's at Flacco everything, right? So and that's sometimes it's just that one chance you need, and the rest is history, and I so think that's is, what uh, happened in Baker's case. Is Baker the next Tom Brady? Because that's Whoa. what happened with Drew Bledsoe. Oh, oh, oh. I'm <laughs> definitely not going to say that. I, let me tell you, I'm a fan of Baker. I'm not on, on the hype bandwagon like many others are. I'm not yeah. even going to put him into maybe be elite yet because I have not seen enough of him. I'm very harsh on quarterbacks being called elite. Um, I have this conversation all the time especially because Joe Flacco is the quarterback in Baltimore, and I will not say he's elite. I think he's whatever level you want to put under elite is where I put Joe Flacco. I don't even know what that's called, but that's where I put Joe. But Baker, I do like him. I think Cleveland has something. Continue buying his jerseys. I support Baker. I think he is going to be something that's going to be fun to watch and grow in Cleveland. Only time will tell. Now switching over to a not-so-exciting incident in the NFL, Kareem Hunt. Mm. And now the NFL, we keep talking about domestic abuse. And I want to say this before we get into this conversation. This year – 
Domestic abuse is not only a problem in the NFL. I think somehow it always just get tie, gets tied to it's only NFL problem now. It happens in all sports, unfortunately, not even just in sports. It happens in business and all sectors um, across this country. And it's very sad that it's something that continues to happen. Uh, but Kareem Hunt, where this conversation comes back up because it just seems like we go, we, we went here we go again, right? When we first saw the video, we all thought back to what? The Ray Rice incident, right? Kareem Hunt, if you haven't seen the video, I mean, I, I don't encourage you to watch it. It's really sad just to see him let his anger and emotions get out of control like that on a 19-year-old girl. Now, we know this, whatever happened, right? Whatever something said or whatever, Kareem Hunt should have known better, right? And I understand right now that he's supposed to be in anger management classes and hopefully that helps him. But I honestly don't see if we're, I don't, honestly don't know if we're going to be able to see him back in an NFL uniform because of what happened. Now, I say this to say, I, he's a star. He, believe me, he's a star, right? I was a fa I'm still a fan of Kareem Hunt on the football field. On the football field, I think he's a great player, right? He led the NFL in rushing last season with 1,327 yards. He's in his fifth season. Um, and honestly, for the Chiefs, I mean, Chiefs were rolling with him, right? We were talking Super Bowl, right, with the Kansas City Chiefs. Who knows, you know? And I think they're still a good team, but, of course, Kareem Hunt changes the situation completely. He was the first player in NFL history to begin his career with a 50-yard touchdown in three straight games. I mean, that's just, I mean, he was on the roll, right? And he's still on the roll. But I think your actions will continue to follow him. And I honestly hope he gets a second chance. I know Ray Rice, it was a, it's a different situation, right? Mm -hmm. Ray was a different type of running back. He was older uh, than Kareem Hunt. And I think, unfortunately, he was the first one. So I think he was the poster child, yes. I agree. But Kareem Hunt, I mean, do you think we'll see him again on the football field? Because right now, people... There's polls all across the country. Business Insider just did one that said nearly three in ten people say he should not be playing back in the NFL three in ten. ever again. That's not bad. That's just horrible. That's not horrible. For what he did, that's not bad, especially because the video, that's, that's right? Not, that's not bad at all. But, honestly. I mean, do you think we'll see him again? He's a oh, star definitely. running back. Uh, definitely. So what do you think the NFL is going to do? He'll be what back do you think next they're year. Do? Okay. With the, okay. He'll be back on the league. So what do you think the NFL is going to do, though, to somehow make I mean, an example of I mean, of course, of he has to get some type of extended uh, suspension. Yeah. Uh, I want to see, I think the standard right now, I think it was four games for something. Um, so it depends. What they the changed conduct it, yeah. It's yeah like I know six. they changed it yeah. recently. So he'll probably get suspended for a couple games, but yeah. he'll definitely get picked up next year. Yeah. Like, I don't mean to bring it up again, but again, Joe Mixon. Yeah. Joe Mixon's video. Another example. Granted, he wasn't in, in, in the league yet, but his video was a lot worse. Yeah. They're both bad, but his was a lot worse yeah. than Kareem's hunt. Yeah. Yeah. And he's back. No one even talks about it. Unfortunately, I had to bring it up for my point right it's now. It's so but true, though, right? He's, like, forgotten. They, nobody even brings that up anymore. And yeah. he came right back and was back in the league, started started playing yeah. well, totally forgotten. And I can yeah. see the exact same thing happening with, with Kareem, Kareem Hunt. Hunt. Yeah. No, unfortunately, like we spoke before, Ray Rice was, el was a little older. So they were, right. teams weren't willing to take that risk with him. Right. He was almost 30. He was already declining production-wise. Right, because running back, you only have so long yeah, life life right? Back. Exactly. Um, Kareem Hunt's still relatively young. He was performing as a, as a as a high caliber running back, yeah. one of the top three. Yeah, I can definitely see a team picking up. I, I I almost expected a team to pick him up this year just to have him on their team. Yeah, similar to the the Redskins, they picked up. Mm, yeah, Foster, and I yes. was like, whoa. And let me let you know, Washington fans let them have it though, but right? I, when they picked him up, I said, okay, so who's yeah. going to pick up Kareem Hunt now? They, I said, the yeah. Redskins might as well go all out and get him but as well. But remember the flag that the Redskins got because of that, right? They they did it, and then Doug Williams had to come back out and apologize did, after because of the social media go? backlash. Did they let okay, him go? that's a good point. They didn't care, but <laughs> they just said, okay, let's do but, this little PR, and we're going to keep him on the roster. But I think that's what's crazy now. I think now teams are seeing that like fans actually really have a voice now. And I say that to say, I think when fans have a big backlash, and that's understand. what we're seeing more and more and more, teams start to react Washington, D.C. fans had a problem. Not just Washington Redskins fans. They had a problem. It's a problem that the Redskins were the only team to call up and say, hey, you know, we'll take them. And it was a problem. And okay. that makes them look bad, right? And PR, now, I know some people say all PR is good PR, but I don't think that's fully true, right? And we saw that with the Reuben Foster case. And the Redskins right now, they're not selling out their games, right? So, I mean, it was a problem. They weren't selling out I games I mean, they weren't selling out before that anyways, right? Like, I mean, we have Mason Foster calling fans like, like not, well, I can't use his words on, yeah. on air. But he didn't say friendly words about the fan base and the team. Teams. You know, Josh Norman has had a problem with the mm -hmm. fan base. And I mean, that's just the DC thing, right? When you're not doing good, I think Redskins fans, for the most but part, let me, won't let come me ask you this you. question. If the Redskins were winning, continuously winning, and Alex Smith didn't get hurt, mm -hmm. do you yeah. think that there would have been that much negative response to yeah. the signing? And do you think it would have lasted so long? I think that if yeah. they'd have won the next game, 
he never would have really. Heard about I it still again. think I th- I still think it would have been that much because uh, you truthfully uh, they backlash. kept him on the roster. You don't still you don't really hear anything about it now if you think about it. Well, because I think it's a social media age, right? So stuff starts trending, and that's when you hear about it, right? Like when TMZ released that Kareem Hunt video, it was everywhere. You could not escape from it, mm-hmm. and now we don't hear about it as much until someone brings it up. Um, and then Ray Rice started trending again, right? When the Kareem Hunt thing started uh, trending, but I I still think it would be that backlash because I think right now the NFL has a black eye on it uh, with the Colin Kaepernick situation, with the Ray Rice situation, and with a number of other things that have happened to the league. So I think they would have still had the backlash. Maybe not as much, but they still would have had it. That's what I'm saying. I want to quote the great. Uh Uh-oh. Ray's coming at me with quotes. Where are we going with Uh, this one? I may may not be saying the quote quote correctly. No, you can't do a quote unless you say it correctly. (laughs) The the great philosopher, Little little Duval. Okay. He He says, what we fake mad about today. Okay. People get mad for the day, maybe even the day after, uh-huh. and totally forget and move on to the next the next topic, next issue. Yeah. People are not going to remember anything about Kareem Hunt until mm. the media brings it up. Maybe that first game, he comes back. The second game, okay. it's over. They're not going to remember. Yeah. I don't see a team's going to sign him. He's going to play well. Yeah. And people are going to totally forget about it. It's unfortunate because, yeah. you know, you still have to bring awareness to this issue. This yeah. issue is continuing. Yeah. It's not just an NFL issue, like of you course, said earlier. Right. It's, a, it's a countrywide yes, issue. Yes, unfortunately. Um, but it's unfair. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Yeah. So a lot of people don't want Kareem Hunt to play football ever again, correct? Mm-hmm. There's lo- like the great Shannon Sharp said this. There's oh, lawyers, okay. doctors, yep. teachers that have similar issues. They yeah. have domestic violence cases. That, that means they're no longer their jobs, ever right. allowed to be a teacher again. Right. No, that's Never. a good point. That's a good that's point. That's not fair. And I don't. Well, unfortunately, we know life isn't fair, right? Yeah. And, and I can agree to that point. I mean, there was a judge was a judge in Alabama that was like he had multiple domestic abuse. Um, allegations against him and mm-hmm. was still being a judge. So I agree with that. But I, I think to say it's right in some cases and not right in the others, I think that gets us in very murky waters, mm-hmm. and I think it's just wrong. It and I think the NFL is on a platform, and it's unfortunate, and it's not fair, but they're on one of the biggest platforms because the NFL is America's game and the biggest sport in this country where, unfortunately, they sometimes are the role models for the rest of the country. And I said to say it's not fair, but it's like when you're – I ask athletes this all the time. I say, mm-hmm. are you a role model? A lot of them will be like, no, I'm not a role model, but you are. It doesn't matter if you think you are, but kids are looking up to you. I think I if somebody's looking up to you, you are a role model. You're a father. Whether you want to be a role model or not, I you agree. are a role model. So I think that to say the NFL is when you're the king sport, you take on the good and the bad. And that includes whatever you do is being seen by the public eye, which means that anything that you do is probably going to get seen more scrutinized than any other place, right? And it's unfortunate, again, but I think the NFL, with what they're trying to do and trying to get the ratings back up, keep them consistent, keep selling jerseys and all this stuff going on, right? They're going to have to really decide – if they're going to keep that new rule change that they did, or are they going to say you do it and you're just out, right? It just needs to come. Because right now that's what the rule is, right? I think you get six-game suspension first, and then after that, like, you're done. Mm -hmm. And that was after, of course, the Ray Rice thing, because I don't think they even knew the Ray Rice video was going to get that crazy, right? But then that happened. But you can see even with that, the NFL didn't really press the issue to get the video for Kareem Hunt. They didn't. Even this one. Even this one. That's what I'm saying. For the Kareem Hunt video, they didn't really press the issue. So. Do they really care about like they, they should I, TMZ? Let me tell you, TMZ, TMZ will, is on it. They, they're they, gonna push it to us. So whether you want us to see it or not, TMZ if, Harvey is gonna yeah, make if, sure. If we Roger all see ever it. sees Harvey in the street, it's gonna be a situation. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna, gonna be a problem. Him. But it's just it's sad to see. But I mean, this is something I think we'll continue to talk about. Unfortunately, in 2019, because mm. I think it's gonna come up again. So 2018, we saw it. But now let's switch back to a positive point. We're gonna go back to the Kansas City Chiefs and Patty Mahomes. Yes, Patrick Mahomes just call continued. Him Patty? I get to call Ooh. him Patty now. I'm calling him Patty. I don't know if that's gonna stick. <laughs> that, that won't not stick. You might want well, to actually, you know why I said that? Because supposedly, <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble, right? He's supposed to. It's leaked, all right? According to his agent, Lee Steinberg, who I've had on the show, he's supposed to have a signature breakfast cereal called Patty Flakes, all right? So see, there was some stuff behind this, right? Mm. I'm coming at you with some, with some quotes and some stats and some stuff that has been dropped. So... <laughs> He, of course, continues to light up social media. What he is doing just continues, I think, to light us up all. Right now, some are, of course, putting him in the NFL MVP player race. Um, Something with the latest performances that he has dropped a little bit behind Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Mm -hmm. Drew Brees, of course, has also been lighting up. But Mahomes, I mean, he just continues, continues, continues to light it up. That loss to the Chargers. Still played a good game. I think they when they took the Baltimore Ravens to overtime, another good quality game, even though I think they tested him in ways that he hadn't been tested yet. But if I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm feeling real comfortable with Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback, even with the Kareem Hunt loss. I think Patrick Mahomes is doing something that we didn't expect of him because he was not the top quarterback in the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw him 
uh, being behind Alex Smith, right? And we knew Alex Smith's time was up and done. Um, and now he's just lighting up the airways. And now all you hear is Patrick Mahomes when we talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. And he's getting the job done right. And I can talk about his stats on and on and on and on again. I don't need to say it because I know everybody else sees it on social media right now. Mm -hmm. So I think Patrick Mahomes is one of the great future. Now, I'll, I'll give him elite, one of the great future elite quarterbacks in the NFL. I think he's going to be a name we remember for a long time. I'm giving him a lot of praise on this show. I really don't. I really don't have much of an argument to go yeah. against him. I mean, I'm, I mean what can you say, he's, right? Like, did you see last week? I believe it was the no look pass. That the he no made? look passes. Oh my god! The audacity. It wasn't fair. <laughs> I, mean, I was looking. I'm like, who, who are you? I would have been I was like, oh, he's Patrick so Mahomes. offended by the fact <laughs> that he threw a no look pass in an NFL bad. game. It's not basketball. It's, it's a whole different level yeah. of like the audacity. But he made it. It was a great pass. And now, like, yeah. no one, who else in the league can do things like that? That's this? what I'm saying. So basically, everybody listening to the show should have a Pat, Patrick Mahomes jersey is, is what you're saying. I don't know. Those Chiefs chief chief jerseys good. aren't They're that, not the, the best, greatest though. looking. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. When you try to dress with them. Sorry, Chiefs fans. <laughs> Maybe y'all make them work. But I agree with you on that, that point. That hot right? orange, uh, <laughs> creamsicle orange. They got, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that orange. But, <laughs> but we are. At least we can agree. 2018, Patrick Mahomes made yeah, a name for himself as a and quarterback. And even, like, even when you spoke about the MVP race, um, yeah. he has taken a step back. But Drew Brees has taken a step back as well. Yeah, and even Todd Gurley didn't have a great Another game last week. So it's still kind of neck and neck. It's still kind of neck and neck. And, neck, and, neck. Yeah. and uh, Patrick Mahomes keeps putting up these numbers. He may win just off of popularity alone. Um, a lot of people may be riding the, the you know, the... Uh, Drew Brees bandwagon, but yeah. Patrick Mahomes might separate himself here in these last couple games. Yeah, and, it's gonna be close though, because Drew. I mean, what you can what can you say bad about Drew Brees? He just continues to continue. But they have such a huge Orleans. running game, so he loses they a lot do. of his passing ability. Not Alvin necessarily Kamara. passing ability, mm. but they hand the ball off a lot more. Right. And of course, with the That's weather getting colder, they have two running backs they got to feed now. That's so a good point. That's a good Patrick point. Mahomes is gonna continue to sling the ball regardless, and then he has the legs to run as well. So yeah, I can definitely see him winning an MVP. And it's just unfortunate, man, the irony that. They got rid of Alex Smith, and they're just kind of oh going in opposite directions. Isn't that crazy? Right now. Yeah. Poor Alex. But I mean, the Chiefs knew what the future was, yeah, right? Definitely. And again, this is the same thing we're seeing in Baltimore. The future is coming to a lot of these NFL quarterbacks, uh, whether they like it or not. Yeah. I will say the only negative thing they're saying right now about Patrick Mahomes is that they're talking about how he's been on the losing end of three high profile pr uh, primetime games now, right? But I mean, you can take that or but lose look who they that, right? In those prime time right, games, okay. So. so New England Patriots, 43 to 40 loss. What a game that was still. I that still was remember a crazy that one. Yeah. Um, okay, the 54 to 51 lost to the Rams yeah. in week 11, all right? And then, of course, the Chargers lost that I talked about earlier. All shootouts, though. Like, so but they that's were what there. I'm saying, right? They that's were another there. point. And, it, and I, don't, I wouldn't even put any of those losses on him. Yeah. Their, teeth, their defense is, hey. is very subpar. Like, yeah. They're passing defense. They can't really stop anyone. If you if all the games you named, yeah. all those were high scoring games, forty right. something. 50. That's a problem for like, a defense. That's not on right. him. He's putting up the numbers. The defense has got to be better. Right. Um. So I, I really wonder, are the Chiefs regretting letting Marcus Pe Marcus Peters just leave like that? Yeah. Granted, they, the Rams defense hasn't improved much with him on their team, but they lost a lot of continuity in that backfield. They got Eric Berry back, but hope. I mean, may, maybe it's too late. Yeah. Unfortunately, but I still see Patrick Mahomes. Definitely, I think he's going to get the MVP. I don't even think it's going to be close. He's going to run yeah. away with that one. Really? All right, you're putting it out so. there. Point, give give him your Twitter handle, so in case you're no, wrong, don't, they, don't can, they can they can at you. Don't at me. <laughs> All right, Ray, we're now going to switch over to the world of tennis because we don't do any discrimination in sports on this show. So we have to talk, of course, the lady of the year, since like Serena Williams, Grace in magazine covers, and what does she not do? But this year, of course, I think one of the biggest situations happened in the cat suit. Right? I know you're probably mm. a fan of the cat suit. I'm not going to say too much more on that because I don't want to get you in trouble when you go home today. But that being said, um, the French Open, the ban on the cat suit. So, of course, uh, Serena Williams and the French Tennis Federation president, uh, basically he had to announce a new dress code after that cat suit, basically saying that players must respect the game and the place. That's how disrespectful he thought her cat suit was, right? I don't even want to really go too deep into that. that, 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 that Ray that, wants that to go statement. home today, everybody. No, not even that. Just his comment. That comment it's alone. Crazy, How is her cat suit cat disrespectful? Suit. Um, Over cat suit. I don't even. Uh, it it's just, crazy. It just bothers me. Uh, in 2018 was a problem, yeah. right? In that situation. But on a more positive note, we're ending 2018 on the right note because the women's, the women's tennis association released its rule changes on Tuesday, right? Okay, and they made sure to add a line addressing acceptable apparel. Apparel. So that being said, basically she will be allowed to rock the suit at women's tennis association matches. But I will make the point that they're saying it still might be barred from the French Open. But basically in 2019, the cat suit can live on, right? I think that's yeah. That's I just joy think to the, a lot of people. the French Open. It seems like that rule was made directly for 
for her. Like yeah. obviously she was yeah. the one wearing the cast. But yeah. so but why why pick on her? She's the she's the best athlete in your sport. Yeah. Not uh, even just in her sport. I think well, one of the greatest. And, yeah, right. of all time, really, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. If you look at the numbers all the time. So why yeah. put that negative or that dark cloud over your sport for no yeah. reason? Just yeah. let her rock out, do what she's doing. Yeah. It's not affecting her performance. She's gonna dominate whether she has a cat suit on or not. Right. So what's the issue really? Right. Like it has to me it's deeper, it's a deeper issue. Oh, it's way um, deeper, Ray. It's way deeper. And I am obviously they never admit to what it is, but right. why why cause this negative this bring right. this negative attention to your sport for no reason your sport is thriving she's the main reason why it's thriving let her live let her be great I mean, she's being great doing it, whether she's wearing a cat suit or a two suit or whatever. Serena Williams is just great and everything Serena's she gonna does, Serena, right? Serena, no matter I what. I like that. Like, Serena's going to Serena. Serena's going to win. She's going to and, and that, I say this to say this. I think the French Open needs to get with the times. And I'll, I'll leave it there. It's a lot deeper. It's, like old, it's real but they need to get with the, It that, is. That rule is, that rule, ugh. Like, we're not wearing just white skirts anymore and polos playing tennis, all right? Times have changed. And again, if you're like Serena Williams and winning, put on anything, honestly, at this point. It's not like she's wearing a swimsuit or something. I mean, it was a full, and actually, remember, the cat suit was made to actually help her mm-hmm. uh, with the problems she had in her blood legs. Remember? Yeah. The blood circulation. So mm-hmm. also, not only does she have a cat suit, but one to help her with her medical condition. I wonder if she would have bought it in right? a doctor's form. They right. Like, she didn't okay, like the doctors good. know when we're younger, right? Like, does she need to go note? hand that to the president? Yeah. Like, no. Come on. That's we're crazy. grown people. She is 37 years old. She's more than grown. All right. But yeah, now... She's 37? She's 37, wow. right? And she's still old. dominating. Huh, it makes us feel bad, right? <laughs> I mean, what am I, I doing? I won a couple tennis matches back in the day, right? Back in MLK. I'm a beast with that ping pong, though. Ping, all right, we're gonna have to play one day. We're gonna have to play on this show live oh, one day for people to see that us. Ping pong work. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have a ping ping pong captain as my co-host. That being said, Ray, I don't want to dwell on your um, old accolades. Let me be great. Too. <laughs> I'm a great ping pong. Player. I'm sure you Let are. Me be great. But Serena also made news in 2018 with the U.S. Open, of course. Naomi Osaka, do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, when who actually Serena? She admitted was her hero when mm-hmm. she defeated Serena Williams in the U.S. Open. And it was her first major title of this 20-year-old career. But, of course, it went to more than just the U.S. Open after the whole thing with Serena and the ref getting into it and her uh, getting penalized. I mean, what did you think of that whole saga with the U.S. Open this year? I mean, honestly, just to go back to her winning, I think that had to be a great, a real nostalgic moment just Mm -hmm. to – feel like you're in the highest point of your career and you're playing against your idol. Like, right. imagine being there right, right now. Like, that just had to be the greatest feeling in the world. And then for her to perform well. Right. And not only perform well, perform well enough to defeat her idol. Yeah. Like, that, that moment is just crazy to me. To me, yeah. that reminds me of the Iverson crossing Jordan moment. Ooh. Like, that's her moment Ooh, in, yeah. in history. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you got to remember that moment for the rest of her life. Yeah. Um, so I just want to speak on that positivity of that. Like I can't imagine being in that position and just yeah, beating. It just, it's nice, it's right? It's just crazy, yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, I feel like it's like any player now getting a shot over LeBron, right? Like I feel like it it's depends that. on who you're talking to. Because well, Lakers fans, a Ooh. lot of them are still Kobe, so they can say, "Oh, he's not the greatest." <laughs> are, are, are you right? We'll say for depends them. Depends on who you talk Ooh, to. Oh, that's a good question. We have to do a show just on the Lakers and if oh. they're accepting LeBron into. Uh, I know a this, lot of people. Kobe some people are territory. There's a lot of them that still live yeah. in Kobe stand. Hey, I still have my Kobe jersey dress, so I'm not mad at them. Believe me, I still. No, we're gonna keep going on, right? We gotta shut up and post that jersey dress. I need that footage. I need that footage. I am a real Kobe fan. I promise you. It goes deep, right? It goes deep. I had the jersey. I kept it, right? What brand? It was, was, what was, was this it early two thousands? It was authentic. Okay. Right. It was authentic. I, was like, I promise tell me you. You got one off the swap meet. <laughs> <laughs> you got one wash and, and it's over for you. <laughs> on my own show, I'm getting, I'm getting blasted. You no, know, I'm gonna post it. I'm gonna do like a, th- I'm gonna do a throwback Thursday, and I'm gonna post it. That's everyone that follows me, you will see the return of the jersey dress. It will come back to you. <laughs> it can only, you're gonna lose a lot of followers. I'm looking for the gain some, right? You maybe, maybe Kobe some. will retweet it and repost. Right, right, maybe. No, okay. Kobe, please retweet it. Ray's her just, Ray's dress. just leaving me in the dust to dry. But that's just shows you Which, which brand? Oh my gosh, you're taking me so bad. This was what early two. What were Jersey dresses then? It was like early 2000s. Oh man. Right, don't leave me in the dust. You remember Jersey dresses? No, I, that's yeah. why I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> this is hilarious to me. You're super tall to be in a Jersey dress. Let me tell you. I'm trying to remember when I hit my growth spurt. What I was size not was this Jersey dress? <laughs> you're like six one. This Jersey dress had to be a two x. Oh like, my. <laughs> just not just the length alone. Like that's crazy. <laughs> You had a real Kobe jersey. I am on. tall, but you know what? <laughs> tall girls need jersey dresses too. Maybe somebody hey, needs to come back with life. jersey dresses for tall girls. I might even have to make that. You brand. might design a couple. Um, <laughs> that might be the move. That might be the move hey, for 2019. Hey, might be. 2019 is the year of endless possibilities. But none the least to say, wrapping up Serena Williams. I mean, I think she's just uh, overall she's a great athlete. I Definitely. think she did lose. She lost two major finals in 2018, but I think she's going to be back and better, stronger than ever. We, she did just have the baby, and I think mm-hmm. she's still coming back from that. But Serena Williams, it's scary to think, but. I don't think our time is ending anytime soon. Oh, that was my next question. I was going to say, how much, much 
longer of a run do you think she has? She's one that's defied age, almost like this Vince Carter type of thing, right? Like, but it's, childbirth changes people. Um, do you, it does. You feel like, for one, is she going to try to expand her family further? I was thinking um, about that. That's one thing. And yeah. then two, child, like I said, childbirth changes women. It does. Um, physically, emotionally, does. mentally. Like, is she going to want to take that time away from her child? But at but. the same time, I feel like we look at it. I think we. I think it, I agree to your point, but I also think we can also say it helps and adds value to women. Like, now you have I more. Too. I say she has more, she to, has play more to play for now, yeah. right? Like, you have something that's a part of you. Um, and I think if anybody can do it, it's Serena Williams. Serena, yeah. I will She's put my money like on Serena woman. Williams. Uh, yeah, definitely. Her husband, I mean, I know he's just always just looking at her like I'm just proud, right? He might like, even I mean, get her a jersey dress for Christmas. <laughs> I knew Ray was going to go back to the jersey dress. <laughs> All right, jersey dresses live on in 2019. Can, I hope on. they make a comeback. Can you imagine I really hope they make a comeback. Serena in a jersey dress <laughs> See, at the French Open? <laughs> now, now, that's when we would have a lot of breathe. people saying, you know what? Yeah, we need to make some rule changes. Yeah, that would be definitely a rule change right now. <laughs> but I hope in 2019 people support me and I get on this Jersey Dress bandwagon, Ray. But saying that to say, we'll now switch on to USA Olympics. And unfortunately, I mean, oh, USA man. Gymnastics, I should say, but it's been a rough year for USA Gymnastics, Ray. Yeah. Larry Nasser. If you have not heard that name yet, I do not know where you have been. This unfortunate, we talked about it earlier with domestic abuse, but now this is sexual abuse happening to these young girls that were training to be these great Olympic gymnasts. And what's scary, it recently came out that Larry Nasser actually helped draft the USA Gymnastics sexual misconduct policies. So he actually helped to draft the policies that he broke. That's right. Great. He, oh, man. That's that's just a whole nother level of disrespect to the sport. Mm. To why would to be placed in that that position of power yeah. and then abuse it so crazy. It's just it's just beyond me. Like, I don't understand. It's sad. It's there, sad. I feel like there should have been more checks and balances in place somewhere. Someone should have caught wind of it somehow. Yeah. Um, for him to be able to do it so long to so many young girls, it's just astonishing to me. Um, it's unfortunate for them, and it's unfortunate that he was able to get away with it for so long. He's he's ruined so many lives with this, and it's just it's all the way all around sad. Man, me, me having daughters, it just yeah. makes me angry just to even talk about it. So. Yeah, and and USA Gymnastics, which is so powerful and. So strong to have all these allegations come out from so many women. So many. I mean, it was heartbreaking to know yeah. so many of these young girls went through it and were living with this pain. And when you see them on stage, you have Allie Raisman and just so many women, you know, just saying, you know, how it changed their life. Because after something like that happens, you're not the same person anymore, mm -hmm. right? I agree. And, and these women that we see and we think they're so, you know, that, I guess it just shows you that what you see on the outside is not always what, what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. So many of them have been holding it in for so long. Um, and I, I will say I'm glad this is coming to light because they've helped save so many other young women who probably would have had to go through what he did to them. And I'm glad they stood up and, and spoke out. I'm glad of this Me Too movement. I, I'm glad that people are finally saying no means no, enough is enough. Um, and USA Gymnastics, I think, has set the bar. Of course, they're great gymnasts, but they're also just great. I'll say they're great role models, Ray, mm -hmm. for what they've been doing. Um, and I give them props. It's not an easy thing to do, and I can imagine being in their shoes, but I'm glad Larry Nassar is going to have to face uh, the criminal justice system and face whoever he believes in uh, for what he's done. Yeah, it's just, it's really sad. I think it's really unfortunate that all those women didn't feel comfortable enough to really have anyone to go to. Isn't that sad? That's what I'm saying. It's a problem. And it was a lot. Like, there were... That whole system has just needs to be broken down and just start over because That's someone sad. had to have some type of checks and balances for one of the girls to just say something. And right. then it should have been followed up, and then it could have prevented so many other issues from happening to the, all these other girls. Yeah. He just, I don't know, the position of power that he was in, is, it's just all the way bad. And I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's upsetting. It's really upsetting. Yeah. It's just, it's just really overall sad. But I'm glad in, I'm glad in 20. 18 that it came to light and hopefully in 2019 this will be something we don't have to talk about yeah. on our wrap-up show um next year so now we're going to switch to a more positive yeah, note. we brought the energy down we, we did i gotta get back, back up. up so we're gonna go to nascar i know there's some nascar fans listening to the show right <laughs> you have to do the car noise this, right this might be the first nascar conversation oh my gosh i have ray and his first nascar in the conversation. history of history <laughs> <laughs> in the history of podcasts nascar needs love too ray all right people like fast cars and saying that to say danica patrick ray mm -hmm. i know it's probably one of your all-time favorite nascar drivers i see the smirk on your face yeah you were danica you fan. just made the assumption go that's daddy. why i smirk some go daddy commercials <laughs> Lit though, but that's a whole nother Go Daddy's pretty cool. Let me tell you, I like Go Daddy. Right. But that, saying that to say, Danica Patrick hanging it up, hanging it up, and we will no longer see her um, in NASCAR. Do you think it was about time though? Because she hasn't. Granted, she's she was like a, I guess a trendsetter, or, or she was the role model for a lot of young girls yeah. that want to get into NASCAR. But she didn't really win at the biggest stage that much. Uh, yeah. she, so I mean, I get it. She was the trailblazer. 
So she was like the speaking point for for the females in NASCAR. Right. But she would she didn't really win as much as we wanted her to. I should say. Right. Right. Um, she did a lot of great things. She definitely right. go down in history. But at some point, let's just do something else. Ooh, I, I was I was not, feeling I'm not, right. I'm like, not saying it like that. Face. But I was like, yeah. And then no, no, no. I, I, the I, I, shade okay, that so came at I don't the mean end to say I don't mean to be shadeful or disrespectful in any way. But I guess I feel like she should have brought along some more girls with her. Um, mm-hmm. as her being the trailblazer, like, hey, bring some people under her wing mm-hmm. to potentially have them so she, so she can pass the baton on. Does she really have someone to pass yeah. it on to right now? Like, That's I don't really recognize any it. other yeah. female drivers that are as popular or close to her being as popular as she is or it was. Um, I feel like she should have brought some with her, more like a team of girls with her, yeah, just to kind of like groom them and let them be the next, yeah, the next Danica Patrick, right? So we can continue or, the legacy. so we can continue yeah. the conversation because I feel like once she leaves, the conversation may kind of yeah. die off a little bit. They may be a couple out there now, but no one with that had that same stature she had, right. the same appeal that she had, that same reach that she had right. to reach a lot of the young girl fans. So um, I don't know if she necessarily handled that whole fame process properly yeah. as far as bringing somebody with her. Like, you know how yeah. they say everybody eats? Yeah. She only She's like the only one that uh-huh. ate. You're saying really, she didn't share the spoon, right? I, well, okay. I, mean, I, may, I may be ignorant to the sport and yeah. NASCAR, but I can't really think of anybody yeah. on top of my head yeah. that followed in her footsteps. Yeah, I think Danica's a tricky one, right? As you said, I mean, she was she's really set a precedent, I think, for women in NASCAR, right? Mm-hmm. Like little girls can now see before they maybe decide to be a NASCAR driver that Danica Patrick was before them, mm-hmm. right? So in that sense, she did set it. Now, she didn't have a she didn't have a lot of good finishes, right? <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, she was there. And I think, again, when you're the first, you face – a lot of different situations, right? And I think if you're the first in anything, um, like Shirley Chisholm, right? Running mm-hmm. for president, first African-American woman, right? She mm-hmm. didn't get maybe where you wanted her to go to, but she still set the precedent. Where now exactly. I can look at someone and say, you know what? There was an African-American woman that tried to be president of the United States. Maybe mm-hmm. I can do it too. Mm-hmm. So I said this, that's why you have to be very careful with Danica Patrick, right? Um, even Barack Obama, right? Like, I mean, say he didn't win presidency, mm-hmm. right? But you... He did, and now I think it's easier for an African American to say, you know what, I can be president, right? Because somebody looks like you doing it. Yeah. I think Danica, for all the women out there, and NASCAR, especially, you talk about an all boys club. I mean, yeah, right, you think about NASCAR, there are women drivers, but they have not been able to get to that level that Danica has gotten to. So hopefully they continue to push, especially now that her spot is open. I mean, of course, you want more than just Danica, mm-hmm. but I think she was able to set that precedent and now leave a legacy where honestly, most people that don't watch NASCAR, and Danica's still probably one of the first people they'll say, uh, with NASCAR because that's how big she got, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you're a NASCAR fan, you know the Jimmy Johnsons, right? And the Tony Stewarts and people like that. But Danica, I mean, she's really, I think, I'd say she's a household name uh, now. I think that's why she got the big GoDaddy sponsorship, mm-hmm. right? And we know the GoDaddy. And even GoDaddy, I'll say, she's probably raised their bar. Yes, I think she yeah, raised a new level. GoDaddy wasn't even really She, raised, she made a new level of sponsorship, I'd say, with athletes, too. Like, Danica, I think, has really changed the game for sponsorship levels um, of athletes. But I do thank her for what she did with the sport. Um, I'm sure she even, you know, wish she could have done more, but still to do what she did and, you know, each time she gave it her all and she had a great team behind her, I think we do have to thank Danica I do. for what I, she did. And I didn't mean any disrespect by oh, saying, no, no, no. like, she I mean, I'll let Danica fans come for you. No, 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 don't, don't, don't come for me. I'm not going to respond. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I feel like I wish she would have had brought some more people course, with her. That's all right. I'm saying. So you wish, right. I mean, but I will say, I, to play devil's advocate, I say we don't technically know if she didn't bring people with her, right? Maybe they just were in the forefront. Maybe she tried to, but they just didn't get to didn't the level that it. she wanted them to. To go maybe. to right like you could have a ment- menti right now that maybe you're pushing to be a broadcaster right but just because maybe they don't say make oh, it somewhere he's gonna big great. he's gonna be great oh all right well i forgot you're ray jones i mean what, what in the world was kelsey nicole nelson thinking yeah, well, i have well, ray jones across from me that? silly me silly <laughs> me it's probably just day of the time it's sunday uh but danica we thank her for all that she's done and mm-hmm. of course Ray, we can't talk about 2018 without also talking about the 2018 winter olympics right yes. pyeongchang uh, I hope I said that. I think I said that right for the first time. I've been practicing that, and I think I said I'm that I'm not going to try time. to correct you. I'm not going to say it again either, though. I hope you heard it the first time. <laughs> but I'll say that to say, so the Olympics made a lot of noise this year mm-hmm. uh, because the U.S. team had openly gay Olympians. And this is something, right, that we had not really heard about before this year. I think in a lot of sports, unfortunately, uh, sexuality matters aren't always talked about at the mm-hmm. forefront, right? We had um, Jason Collins, right, NBA. We had, what was the football player? He's quickly forgetting my name. Uh, I can't remember. I can't name. remember. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, I got you. And now Olympians, right? And these are the best of the best, right? They're representing our full country. Just when you hear that, I mean, what do you think it says about our country and in 2018 where our country has kind of moved in sports? I think it's huge. Uh, not just for the country, but for the world. Because at this point, 2018, people are like, going to like what they want to like. They're going to mm-hmm. be with who they want to be with. Mm-hmm. It's no one else's business. 
So they should not feel threatened by, like, some people are threatened by the fact that two guys like each other. Like, why do you even care? Right. They like each other. They don't like you. Like, why does it bother you? Right. Why does it affect you? Why are you so anti whatever about it? It's, to me, the whole situation, the whole, the whole thought, that whole thought process is dumb. As far as, because it goes back to even race. People don't like other people because one is one color, one is black, one is white. Religion, same thing. All these Mm -hmm. different things that divide us, they make, they make the human race weaker, period. Right. Um, why does it that person's situation bother you to the point that you got to right. cause an issue? Right. It's it's to me the whole mindset is is dumb. I hate it. I shouldn't say I hate it because I don't like the fact that they hate black people. They hate gay people. Right. But that whole mindset is just dumb to me. And yeah. I, I, and it's great to see that they were yeah. open enough to be able to participate and admit, hey, I'm openly gay right. and I'm still going to dominate this event. Right, and we can still cheer them on as USA Olympians, exactly. right? And that's what I loved about it. And so this year it was a record. Uh, 15 LGBTQ athletes at the 2018 Winter Olympics, right, in Pyeongchang. Oh, I did it again. I said it right. I'm very proud of myself, including men for the first time. So that's why I think it's huge, and I think it shows where this country is going. And I think 2019, we're on to a more promising start. But I always say love is love. Love who you love. And honestly, if you're a great athlete, if we're looking at sports and athletics, you're supposed to be cheering them on for their athletic abilities, right, at the end of the day. So if they're the best to get to be an Olympic athlete, how many people can say they're Olympians, right? Like, that's something I used to dream about. Then I realized uh, my basketball skills weren't going to carry me to the Olympics and so I talk about it now. Um, But saying that to say, I mean, I'm glad, and I hope it continues, and I hope people see that you can be who you are. Say who you are, be who you are, and we'll still support you and love you and keep winning gold for our country. I get really really competitive during the Olympics, right? I'm like, USA has to be on top, right? Because we're we're the best. Of course. We're the best, so continue to win golds for our country. (laughs) We'll have to do an Olympic game, maybe listen in with Cannon live from the Olympics one day. That'd be interesting. Speaking it into existence. We got to do summer Olympics, though. We can't do I like summer. I'm not trying to do winter. It's too cold. Winter is cold. But summer's really summer. hot, and I'll be sweating a lot. Uh, we could do it indoor, though. We could do it indoor. That might work out. That might be a, a fair a fair bargain for both yeah. of us. All right, you guys <laughs> might have to. Bring your jersey dress. <laughs> I'm not going to forget the jersey dress. I'm going to have to call this episode like the jersey dress <laughs> saga or something. Oh, yeah, we definitely. <laughs> I'm telling you, after this, I'm probably about to have jersey dress sales like, go up like crazy. I'm so going to open local investigation department store. <laughs> on this jersey dress. I want to know where it was bought. <laughs> How many times it was worn? <laughs> what year was it? What shoes oh did you gosh. wear with it? Did I you wear sneakers or heels? That's a that's a real I'm question. Sneaker. I was definitely a sneakers girl growing up. You know, it's funny because I have to go back to the, it was a Kodak camera picture. See, I still remember. You remember the Kodak cameras, right? Oh, Don't man. you know you used the Kodak too? The yellow Kodak, they're yeah, yellow, right? Yeah, All right, I have the picture. I just have to search through my parents' basement when I go visit them so you, for the holidays. So you was prepared for anything that day. You was, was. ready to go to the club or That's play pickup ball. Jersey. People don't understand how, like, how <laughs> flexible they he were. He was like, we can suit like up now, real quick. And even remember skorts? I don't even oh remember skorts. Gosh. Remember like the shorts and then Take the skirt my around it? <laughs> she had on a skirt. Oh, no. Skorts were great too because you can still play sports, but then you can still be like cute, you know? So it was like yeah, both th- ways. That wasn't the purpose of it though. They say they advertise it that way, but you weren't supposed to do it. <laughs> Let's be clear. I love how we're going back like a 90s, 2000 conversation. This is the throwback show. I mean, right, let me tell you, I saw an old picture of you, right? Let me tell y'all. Oh. So y'all remember Nelly back in the day, right? Was with the big t-shirts and the big baggy. Did That's you wear the everybody. band-aid too? No, Did you wear the band-aid like Nelly? Okay, no, you weren't like real Nelly. You weren't, okay. I had a but visor, but I wore it around had my the neck. visor. But everybody did that so. all right so everybody wore jersey dresses then to my point see right I know, see i can make that point you are you see, right all right this but you me. played ball and then went to the club in the same jersey no dress. see yes <laughs> right all right i might have to have a new co-host in 2019 <laughs> <laughs> but to say i can't believe how quickly the show has went right but 2018 let's do this before we end your okay. favorite sports memory of 2018 i'll let you go favorite first. favorite sports memory um i would have to say <laughs> it was more of an event my favorite okay. sports event would mm-hmm. probably have been mayweather versus mcgregor Ooh, I thought boxing. that was a great fight. Um, really? Yeah. Really? I, was that 20? I think that was still this year. Yeah. yeah that would have been my favorite. Hmm. I was surprised by that one. I thought you were going to give me something New York. Y'all, if y'all don't we, know, Ray's from New York. So I spelled something New York. We've been every sport this year. There's yeah, nothing else true. to be happy <laughs> <That's> about. <true. laughs> that is true. Okay, you know what? I changed my vote. Okay. It was drafting Saquon Barkley. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good moment. Because that's all we got to cheer for right now. What is now. it, Chris Collinsworth? Who's the one that always talks about his thighs? It oh, well, right. I, I'm not going to talk about his thighs. So let's <laughs> Ray's not going to give us no thigh talk. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. And <laughs> for me, I will say, actually, I'm actually going to say LeBron going to, to the Lakers. And I say that to say because I think LeBron is really just showing that he can create a dynasty and a destiny mm-hmm. anywhere. 
He's LeBron James, the king. Even though I still like Kobe, but we're not going to get into that on the show. That'll be next show, right? We'll get into that one because I know you're a, big, you're a big Kobe fan, right? I'm a, I'm not a big Kobe fan. I'm more of a neutral for both of them. Okay. I'm a Carmelo right. fan, but we're not even going to go there this All year. All right. Oh, 2018 ooh. was not a mellow year. Oh, my gosh. We forgot to talk about Carmelo, but no, maybe we, it's better we didn't because yeah, Carmelo's just been struggling yeah. and hurting. And That's my guy right there. Carmelo, yeah. we're praying for you for 2019. I want to say positives about Carmelo. Yeah, please don't say anything bad about Carmelo because yeah. Mar- Carmelo is easily the greatest basketball player of all time. Oh, man. Yeah, now we have to wrap up this show. So make sure you follow us on social media. We are on Instagram and Twitter at listening with KNN. Again, listening with KNN. And then, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at the real K Nelson. And Ray, give him your Twitter handle. First, I want to make a correction. Oh, I'm my gosh. old. <laughs> <laughs> I really said McGregor versus Mayweather. Oh, my God. That was definitely even last year. <laughs> I, w- I didn't mean to say McGregor no, versus Mayweather. I meant remember. to say McGregor versus Khabib. That's what I was trying to okay. get to. We'll I thought that fight was amazing. Doubt. And then the fight after the fight was, was like WWE better. in its yeah. prime. Yeah. I Did you watch know. Canelo at all? Yeah, yeah. I watched okay. Canelo. Canelo dominated the other day. Yeah. Oh, was it yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah, Last yeah. night. He okay. dominated. Um, it it was on the service that nobody's going to have, though. So I, thought I was, was so mad about that. Yeah. I was very mad about that. So, yeah, let me, let me clear that up before anybody comes for me. Give me your Twitter handle so I can at you and talk about how old you are. The, at <laughs> the real Kane. And <laughs> I went to see he got my Twitter handle wrong, so he can't even do it. Okay. All right. At guys, me he's at old. He listen, forgot. Listen, okay. listen with Kane. And <laughs> he still did it wrong. <laughs> I'm too old for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's tired, y'all. But as I don't old. be on that Twitter. That, tw- <laughs> that what is it? The Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> I don't be tweeting twatters. All right. I will give you props, Ray, because you're probably gaining um, our older fan base. And that being said. I'm not that, I'm not that old. <laughs> Just kidding. Really? Guys, he's a millennial. You're still a millennial, right? Yeah, I'm still okay. a He's a millennial. Like, right on that These border two, of millennials. He's still a millennial. So we will wrap Ray in this. I got my master's <laughs> as a millennial. So We got our master's together. So that I can attest to. All right. So shout out to Georgetown. Shout out to Allen Iverson. Shout out to Patrick Ewan. All right. Not enough love for Georgetown. All right. That's a wrap for this edition of Listen In with KNN. I hope you had fun, learned something, and of course, jumped in on the KN Band wagon be sure to listen in each and every week for new shows that drop online at fox sports 1340am.com and kelsey nicole nelson.com if that's not enough the show is available for download on itunes of course and google play yes we don't discriminate against iphones or samsung products here <laughs> be sure to subscribe rate and review your feedback and support matter until next week enjoy the sports world smile and don't take your fantasy sports too seriously like right over here because there's always another play bring back jersey dresses <laughs> that's all.